Just a few words of introduction. Throughout the scripture readings, we hear that God is with us, defeating death. Through Jesus Christ, God brings peace and life. Joy fills the scripture readings today. In 1 Peter, Peter speaks of the glorious joy that is beyond words. The Gospel from John reflects a variety of emotions, offering the blessing of peace and the promise of life, as the disciples realize that Jesus is risen. And we begin with the call to worship. Come into God's presence with joy. In God, we have an enduring inheritance that cannot perish. Come into God's presence with hope. In Christ, we have an inheritance that is pure. Come into God's presence with longing. In the Spirit, we have an inheritance that is kept safe. Come into God's presence with love. In God, we have an inheritance that brings new life. And we sing our opening hymn as we continue in the Easter season, hymn number 364, Christ has arisen, alleluia, and we sing the first three verses. And we continue with the prayer of confession. Merciful God, you come offering us peace, but we hold on to our fears. You come offering us faith, but we cling to our doubts. You come offering us a future filled with promise, but we retreat to pleasant memories of the past. We want to believe that you offer us an inheritance that cannot perish, is pure and kept safe. We want to see ourselves as you see us. We want to live as you would have us live. We want to believe that life is stronger than the death we see all around us. Help our unbelief, O oh God, that we may truly know and live your gift of resurrection. Amen. Hear the words of assurance. The inheritance that God promises us cannot perish, is pure and is kept safe. Even when we are consumed by doubt, God is always faithful. 
Even when we lose our way, God is able to find us and bring us home. Even when we are at war with ourselves, God is able to bring us peace. May we experience the peace of God through the forgiveness of sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Loving God, you are our refuge and our hope. You instruct us in your truth and teach us the ways that lead to life. Through your son Jesus, we inherit the abundance of your grace. Even when the way is difficult, even when we struggle, you are with us. Speak your word of peace to our hearts that we too may proclaim Jesus as Lord. Amen. And we continue with our scripture readings. The first reading comes from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. The introduction to this Bible reading reminds us that it was written to encourage Christians experiencing hardships and suffering because of their faith in Christ. The letter opens by blessing God for the living hope we have through Christ's resurrection, even amid difficult circumstances and surroundings. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1. May the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ be blessed. On account of his vast mercy, he has given us new birth. You have been born anew into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. You have a pure and enduring inheritance that cannot perish, an inheritance that is presently kept safe in heaven for you. Through his faithfulness, you are guarded by God's power so that you can receive the salvation he is ready to reveal in the last time. You now rejoice in this hope, even if it's necessary for you to be distressed for a short time by various trials. This is necessary so that your faith may be found genuine. Your faith is more valuable than gold, which will be destroyed even though it itself is tested by fire. Your genuine faith will result in praise, glory, and honor for you when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you've never seen him, you love him. Even though you don't see him now, you trust him and so rejoice with a glorious joy that is too much for words. You are receiving the goal of your faith, your salvation. Here ends the reading. Inspire our understanding, Spirit of God. The introduction to the gospel tells us that the risen Jesus appears to his disciples, offering them a benediction, a commission, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. But one of their numbers is missing, and his unbelief prompts another visit from the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. It was still the first day of the week, that evening while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities. Jesus came and stood among them. He said, peace be with you. And after he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they aren't forgiven. Thomas, the one called Didymus, one of the 12, wasn't with the disciples when Jesus came. The other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But Thomas replied, 
Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, put my finger in the wounds left by the nails, and put my hand into his side, I won't believe. After eight days, his disciples were again in a house, and Thomas was with them. Even though the doors were locked, Jesus entered and stood among them. And he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into my side. No more disbelief. Believe. Thomas responded to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Jesus replied, do you believe because you see me? Happy are those who don't see and yet believe. Then Jesus did many other miraculous signs in his disciples' presence, signs that aren't recorded in this scroll. But these things are written so that you will believe that Jesus is the Christ, God's Son, and that believing, you will have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. God of the resurrection, you have rolled a stone away and the tomb of our world has been opened wide. With the dawn has come a new creation. May your word to us today empty our tombs, renew our lives, and release your power. Through the risen Christ we pray. Amen. So for our amusement, I came across another contemporary and contextual interpretation of today's gospel reading. So here we have an interpretation of the 11 disciples participating in a Zoom meeting. So Zoom being one of the popular online platforms being used for meetings and other purposes. And you will notice there are only 11 disciples here because Judas is no longer in the picture. Jesus has his audio on, uh, but not his video. And he simply says, hey. But no one can see him. So Thomas says, unless he turns on his camera, I will not believe. So in the case of Thomas, seeing is believing. The gospel reading begins by saying, it was still the first day of the week. So it's actually still the same day that Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone was rolled away. And even though for us, it's a week after Easter Sunday, in terms of the gospel reading, it is still the same day. And it was that very same evening that the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid. And the gospel reading tells us that the disciples were afraid of the Jewish authorities. In the midst of that fear, Jesus came and stood among them and says, peace be with you. And in the gospel reading, we hear those words, peace be with you, not once, but three times. The disciples perhaps are hoping that now that Jesus is back, their lives can go back to normal. Now, many of us are also behind closed doors. We too may be afraid, but we're not afraid of the Jewish authorities. We are afraid of the coronavirus and afraid of possibly getting it or spreading it. In the midst of the uncertainty, anxiety, and fear that we may be experiencing, Jesus also comes to us and says, peace be with you. And as we hear on the news of the provincial and uh, Canadian governments talking about the possibility of lifting some of the public gathering restrictions, perhaps we too 
are hoping that our lives can get back to normal. But what do we want normal to look like? Do we want it to look exactly like it did before we ever heard of COVID-19? Or do we want to make some changes? I read a very interesting article this past week that relates to this. I appreciated the perspective the article presented. It was written from a US perspective, so the examples are American, but otherwise, much of it is, was very relatable. And this is some of what the article says. I hope you might consider this. What happened is inexplicably incredible. It's the greatest gift ever unwrapped. Not the virus, not the deaths, but the great pause. It is, in a word, profound. At no other time ever in our lives have we gotten the opportunity to see what would happen if the world simply stopped. A carless Los Angeles has clear blue skies as pollution has simply stopped. In a quiet New York, you can hear the birds chirp in the middle of Madison Avenue. Coyotes have been spotted on the Golden Gate Bridge. These are postcard images of what the world might be like if we could have find a way to have a less deadly effect on the planet. And the writer of the article continues by saying, I beg of you, take a deep breath and think deeply about what you want to put back in your life. This is our chance to define a new version of normal, a rare and truly sacred, yes, sacred, opportunity to get rid of the crap, and they used a stronger word, which I won't use on TV, and to only bring back what works for us, what makes our lives richer, what makes our kids happier, what makes us truly proud. We care deeply about one another. That's clear. That can be seen in every supportive Facebook post, in every meal dropped off for a neighbor, in every Zoom birthday party and family gathering. We are good people. And as good people, we want to define on our own terms what our country will look like in five, 10, 50 years. And we can do that on a personal scale in our homes and how we choose to spend our family time on nights and weekends, what we watch, what we listen to, what we eat, and what we choose to spend our dollars on and where. We can do it locally in our communities, in what organizations we support, what truths we tell, and what events we attend. And yes, if we just want to live a simpler life, we can make that happen too. Quite a bit of wisdom in there, I thought. So I think some of what the author of that article was trying to say was rather than focusing on how soon till we can get back to normal, perhaps the question should be, what will we be free to do, try, and be in this new normal? What part of our old patterns seems suddenly not just non-essential, but perhaps not even that helpful? Will we turn outward and recognize the painful leveling effect of the coronavirus to make us realize that we are all intricately bound to each other and dependent on one another? 
as individuals, congregations, communities, countries, and humanity. The future is still open. God is still at work creating, recreating, and sustaining us to do things we could not have imagined previously. We are still mostly behind locked doors. We don't see, and at least sometimes we certainly doubt, just as Thomas did. But these scripture readings are full of blessings on those who do not see. The Gospel of John is written so that though we do not see him, we may believe in the risen Christ. And today, every day, Christ comes to us. Wherever we are sheltering in, bringing peace, forgiveness, and the spirit of life and hope. While we can't reach out together to touch Christ's body in the Holy Communion, with our ears and eyes, we touch Christ's wounds in the scripture itself. We are once again made witnesses to the resurrection for the sake of all our neighbors. We can be assured that just as Jesus walked through the locked doors and stood among the disciples saying, peace be with you, Jesus also comes to us in the midst of our uncertainties, anxieties, and fears, and stands among us saying, peace be with you. Jesus is with us in the midst of the necessary changes and faithful adaptations, calling us forward, blessing us to believe, though we do not see, and promising to be with us and for us forever. Amen. Calling on God to grant us wisdom and courage during this time, we sing our hymn of the day, God of Grace and God of Glory, hymn 705. Verses 1, 2, and 4.
Praying in our homes while gathered together in the spirit of Christ, we ask God to bestow peace upon a needy world using the words, protect us, O God, for we take refuge in you. Faithful God, we pray for the church around the world. Enter into our countless separate houses with your gift of peace. Guard the health of our bishops, pastors, teachers, and musicians. As Christians around the globe are united in their suffering through the coronavirus, so unite us also in the hope of life in the risen Christ. Protect the church, O God, for we take refuge in you. Creating God, we pray for the earth that you have given into our care. As human society is quieted by sickness, give your plants and animals, lands and seas a time to renew and replenish themselves. Nurture the fields that will supply our food. Protect the earth, O God, for we take refuge in you. Righteous God, we pray for the nations. Give peace to our troubled world. Bless the efforts of the United Nations and the World Health Organization. Strengthen democracies. Bring an end to violence between nations, across borders, within countries, between gangs, and inside homes. Bless our country with integrity in government, attention to the needy, persistence in facing the pandemic, and wisdom in proceeding into an unknown future. Protect the nations, O God, for we take refuge in you. Compassionate God, we pray for all in any need. Comfort those who mourn, be with the sick, especially the multitude who have contracted the coronavirus. Visit the homes of all who are isolated and hold the lonely and fearful in your arms. Grant your peace to the millions of unemployed. Give them food for today and hope for tomorrow. Support medical care workers in their endless and sometimes fruitless tasks of attending to the pandemic patients. Provide needed medical supplies for hospitals. We pray for those in hospital and for all those who mourn the loss of loved ones. Protect the needy, O God, for we take refuge in you. Loving God, we pray for ourselves. Renew our spirits with the living hope of Christ's resurrection and hear also the private petitions of our hearts. Protect us, O God, for we take refuge in you. With bold confidence in your peace, which passes all human understanding, we offer these prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. During this time of offering, we would like to thank you for your generosity in mailing in your offerings, dropping them off, using the e-transfer on our website, and signing up for the pre-authorized payments. We close our service by singing together, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, hymn number 836, and we'll sing all three verses. Joyful, joyful, we will. 
receive the benediction. You have heard the story. You have seen new life in the risen Lord. Christ is among us now and forever. Peace be with you. Peace be with you always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be at peace, inspired by Christ to love and serve. Thanks be to God.